Hey everyone and welcome. Today we'll be breaking down an advanced freezing method that Bjergsen used in our previous daily. So what you can expect to learn from this video is how to utilize a niche way of freezing that is only really effective against one dimensional shove champions like Zoe and Azir where the harass under turret is often suboptimal. As you may already suspect, the following isn't super useful for players who haven't already got a great grasp on wave management. If you're not super confident with your grasp on wave control, then your time would be better spent watching our wave management courses rather than this daily. Anyway, let's move forward with this guide where we'll break this one down and teach you how to use this freezing method in your own games. Let's first run you through the overview of what Bjergsen wanted to achieve with his freeze and the outcome. Zoe has one spell to push and damage with, which gets blocked by minions. All she wants to do is shove and her Q is both powerful and cost efficient for pushing. While Bjergsen could match her push on the Syndra, it would cost a lot more mana to keep the wave even with multiple spells than it would for Zoe with just her Q. So he wants to contest Zoe's push so he can hide behind his minions to be safe from her spells while looking for trades. We've already broken this one down in our last daily, but how does he maintain a freeze in this area without losing too much mana? So what he effectively does is thin the wave during the early stages of the lane, and when the enemy wave eventually does get shoved, he uses his tower to push the wave back out for him to constantly land a freeze in this area here. Okay, so the idea of what he's doing is to thin the wave so that he doesn't get shoved too quickly or too easily, then, when he does eventually get shoved, he secures his last hits under the tower and then continues thing in the wave as he gets shoved again. That's the simple version of what's happening. What gets complex are the subtleties involved for how to execute this effectively without getting shoved too easily and harassed, missing last hits, and losing health. Let's finally break this down wave by wave and figure out how Bjergsen manages to freeze via a slow push. As the first waves meet in the center, Bjergsen is going to actively auto attack the minions pretty much all the time that he isn't looking for harass. Auto attacks are a free way to thin the wave or to push, so really try to focus on actively doing this when you need to thin the wave or push. Speeding it up, Zoe of course eventually gets the push. Now it's time to pay attention. See these three casters? Well, they are a key part of freezing with a slow push. When you want to delay your own minion wave in this area here, you need the next enemy wave to clash with your minions before it pushes too far towards the center. Bjergsen wants to use these caster minions to delay his upcoming wave from clashing with the opposing wave in the center of the lane. Don't worry if you didn't catch all of this, we're going to see it happen again and again. He moves forward to secure the CS without losing them under his tower. The casters don't die before his new wave connects, so they clash in his freezing zone, and now the next minion waves will fight where he wants to keep the wave. This is a fairly standard way of setting up a soft freeze so far. Now on the second wave, even though he has soft freezing it, he immediately begins thinning out the wave once again. Reason being, Zoe's goal is to push and only push in pretty much every matchup. Now you will notice that he's mostly focusing down the melees, and there's an important reason for that. He wants the three casters at the back to secure his next freeze. He wants them to be healthy so that they can tank tower shots if needed without him losing CS. If Zoe pushed to the tower and they were all on awkwardly low health, he would lose last hits while executing the strategy, making it unviable to win the lane with. What you will find is that during this whole lane, Bjergsen lost nearly zero last hits the entire time. As the melees die, do you notice anything familiar here? This is a nearly picture perfect match to what happened on the first wave, and it's no accident. Once again, these casters are going to delay the upcoming blue wave, ensuring that he keeps the wave frozen in the exact same spot as last time. And check this out, Bjergsen has more mana than Zoe, while freezing as a Syndra and spending most of his mana on trading, not wave clear. The cannon minion pushes forward, but into tower range. So without spending mana, the tower has helped out clear the cannon, and then once more, we're left with the three red casters. 
Alright, so we think you get the picture as to what is happening so far, and we're about to show you the next couple of waves where things really start to speed up. But let's first think about how you do this in your own games, and when. So as we mentioned, this is a niche and advanced freezing method, and it relies on your opposing champion needing to constantly push to win the lane, without being able to harass you too well under the turret, limiting us to pretty much just Zoe and Azir. The reason why it works versus these guys, and not say a Zareth, is because Zoe and Azir are fairly one dimensional in the way that they shove and harass. They can only choose between one or the other in most cases, especially Zoe. Zoe uses her Q to push, and when her Q is down, she can't trade. Since Bjergsen consistently thins out the wave, it forces Zoe to use every Q on pushing without having much minion wave momentum, meaning that Zoe doesn't have her Q available to harass once she does shove the wave. That being said, just understanding this freezing method and why it's used will truly add value to your mastery and understanding over wave control where eventually you will always be able to put the wave where you want it, backed by a winning game plan with our daily system. Anyway, let's get back to rounding out how Bjergsen executes this freezing method. As the lane moves on, we're now on the fourth wave of the lane. We have to remember that both champions are getting stronger as they level up, so their wave clear is improving. Bjergsen takes a great trade onto the Zoe, but he uses all of his spells for it. That means that the red wave is going to push more quickly than the last, as he's chosen to go for a full out trade, rather than saving his Q for thinning out the wave. He misses just one melee, not a big deal, and these three casters are full life, but this time in tower range. Once again, his three next melees got delayed because of the enemy casters, meaning that the waves clash into the freezing zone once again. This is now wave 5. Bjergsen has invested nearly all of his mana into just trading, but he's held a freeze which he spent very very little mana maintaining, which is incredibly valuable. On wave 6, Bjergsen set up the exact same thing in the exact same way and has forced Zoe to recall. She simply wasn't getting enough done in the early game thanks to this immaculate wave management, and now the Syndra is set up to shove, recall and then go for a kill at level 6. Now you may be wondering, Every single time Bjergsen was able to do this, which was every wave, it all came down to those three casters. How does he always seem to have them ready to set up the freeze at the perfect time? So this is something that you just have to get a feel for and practice, but this is what he did. He knows when his own wave is coming up to the lane by feeling or by looking at the map. This lets him know how quickly he needs to kill the current minion wave to ensure that there aren't too many if any, melee minions alive, which would linger under the tower for too long, since if he didn't kill these melees fast enough, then his upcoming blue wave would hang around for too long in this area here, causing the upcoming enemy wave to go straight under Bjergsen's turret. If that happened, he would miss out on CS, have to use more mana and spells on CSing instead of trading, and wouldn't have any of the lane dominance that we saw him show previously. Alright, so that brings us to the end of this daily. Now you guys understand why we couldn't break this down in our previous daily in a satisfying and applicable way. Let us know what you thought of this video since we definitely debated about whether you guys would like to learn these concepts that are honestly pretty niche. Thanks for watching and we will catch you next time.